Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. On a kind of drizzly, cool spring day in uh, mid-May at 2,700 feet up in the Appalachian Mountains of Floyd County, Virginia. And I'm going to take you to see what I think is the most beautiful of all the native spring woodland wildflowers. The pink lady slipper, or the moccasin flower, as the indigenous peoples called it. We're going to go look at this flower in a minute, which is only probably 50 yards from my house. And of course, I'll tell you the scientific name and let you know what that means. Tell you the Ojibwe indigenous people's legend of how the moccasin flower came to be. We're going to look at it up close and how to ID it, which is really pretty simple. And then we're going to look at the amazing biology and symbiotic relationships that this plant has both with insects as well as mycorrhizal fungi. It's really, really an amazing story. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh produce seed pollen and it's so we're gonna just take a few steps from my house and walk over here to this glade of pine trees pine forest where pink lady slippers they prefer the acidic soils of especially of pine trees and as well as some of oaks and other hardwoods and right in here just yards from my house is a stand of native pink lady slippers that has been growing here probably since the indigenous peoples lived in these forests. Coming up here, I can see a few of their leaves that are coming up. Some of these take up to 12 years before they'll flower. And right over here is a pink lady slipper in full bloom. Isn't that spectacular? I just never get tired of seeing this particular flower and looking at its amazing structure. It's really awesome. So I find a nice clear spot here in these soft pine needles where there weren't any plants growing up. And I'm surrounded by these pink lady slippers and some of the smaller ones that are coming up. Pink lady slippers are pretty easy to ID because it's a large pink flower and it just has two leaves that are coming up seemingly from the roots and the flower is on a single stem. So one large pink flower on a single stalk and two leaves that are coming up from the ground. The leaves are pointed and have very distinct ridges or veins running almost parallel the length of the leaf. The scientific name of pink lady slippers, or moccasin flowers as the indigenous peoples called it, is Cypripedium acule. Cypripedium acule. So the scientific name Cypripedium comes from the Greek. Cyprid refers to Venus and pedium refers to feet. Species name acule refers to the fact that there's no stem. Acule means no stem and it appears that the leaves come straight from the ground while the flower is on a single stalk. I love finding out the name of the plant so that I can look it up and research it. And this plant comes with many Native American legends and stories because this is a native plant and the indigenous peoples lived with this plant. And so there has many associations with the indigenous peoples. The Ojibwe had a legend concerning how the moccasin flower came about. And in this legend, there was a young Indian girl who lived a part of a tribe. And the tribe was subject to an awful plague over the winter. And during this plague, many people died, including the village healer. So it was up to this girl to go across through the winter snow, find the medicine that they needed, which was of course would have been in a, as a plant, and bring it back to the trot. And on her way back, she lost her moccasins and her feet soon became bloody and left blood tracks in the snow. 
she finally made it back to the tribe and saved the rest of the people. And when spring came and the snow melted away, wherever her foot had bled on the snow came up a pink moccasin flower. While the indigenous peoples called it moccasin flower, the European settlers that came found a use for the plant as well. They used it as a substitute for a plant in, that grew in Europe called valerin. And valerine was used as a sedative. And so the European settlers named this plant American valerine because of its reputed sedative properties. Moccasin flower had many uses by the indigenous peoples in medicine. It wasn't used as food because basically this plant is toxic, as are many medications if you take too much of it. It was also used, including by the European settlers who probably learned about this plant from the native peoples, to cure insomnia and as a anti-anxiety medication. But for me, some of the most fascinating biology about this plant is its association with both insects and mycorrhizal fungi. Fungi that are in the soil that intertwine with the roots of plants. Let's talk about the bees first. So bees, you know, pollinate flowers. And bees, their function, the reason they go to the flowers is because the flowers have nectar for them. They have sugar, and they can bring back that sugar and feed their offspring. The pollen that is sort of carried accidentally by bees in their effort to get nectar. And the pollen is the male gamete of flowers. So flowers can be fertilized by the pollen carried from plant to plant by the bees. So bees are attracted to the moccasin flower because of this large pink flower. They're attracted to its colors and also by its odor. The bees have to enter through the front and really push their way in. Once they're in, they kind of find out that they're trapped and they also don't find any nectar. So to get out, there's certain exits that they have to go through. And passing through those exits, they got to brush over the female stigma part of the flower as well as the pollen-laden stamens on their exit. So they'll go to another flower, another flower, another flower, and they'll carry that pollen from plant to plant. But apparently the bees lose interest in this flower because there's no nectar. So scientists estimate that only 5% of these flowers are actually end up being pollinated because the bees don't go to them from flower to flower to flower like they would for clover, for example, that's really rich in nectar. So it's kind of a head scratcher how this plant survives. So the seeds of this plant that are produced when a flower does by chance get pollinated are tiny and there are thousands of them. The seeds are so small they seem almost powdery. These seeds are different from apple seeds or acorns or bean seeds or sunflower seeds in that they don't have that nutritious packed protein and nutrition that these other plant seeds have that are there to sprout the plant, to give them that plant that energy to get started, to grow roots going down and, and grow leaves growing up until they can do photosynthesis on their own. So how do these seeds survive? This particular fungus that lives in very close association, a mutualistic relationship with the pink lady slippers, has to grow up and find the seed, intertwine it, they digest the seed coat, which otherwise would be virtually impenetrable, and help that seed to sprout. So the mycorrhizal fungi provides the seed, the energy and nutrition, to start to grow into a small flower. As the flower grows, this relationship becomes more two-sided. It's more a mutualistic relationship where the plant, when it's green and does photosynthesis, shares some of its sugar and energy with the fungus. The fungus, in turn, helps the plant not only absorb water, but also absorb minerals and other trace nutrients. So they both benefit from this relationship. The plant takes up to sometimes 12 years 
to grow. A lot of people are concerned about the status of this plant in terms of survival and in being endangered. You're definitely encouraged not to dig it up and leave the plants where they are and observe them only and don't pick the flowers. They're found across the Appalachian Mountains up north and pretty much ubiquitous across the northeastern third of the United States. If they're endangered or threatened or their population decreasing, it's really based on some local standards. The plants are declining due to habitat loss and from people digging it up or picking the flower. And also my plants here last year were devastated by deer. Some deer came through here and ate every single plant to the ground and I never got a chance to see one flower. This year they're doing a, a little bit better. So these native plants, like pink lady slipper, are subject to predation by overpopulation of deer. They're subject to habitat destruction and they're subject to invasive species that compete with them for soil and light. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature in Your Backyard and this examination of our native pink lady slipper and its unique stories and legends and its association with the indigenous peoples that lived here before us and the European settlers who came in and also used uh, this plant and were made aware of it. If you like what I do, please subscribe, check out my other videos, and I love hearing comments from my viewers. Please leave me a comment or a question, and up until now, I've been answering every comment, every question that's posted. So thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.